Welcome to the channel, my name is Grizzy and today we have the ultimate controller guide. This video is going to be the one video to cover all the information that you're going to need to maximize your play in Apex Legends. Whether you're on console or PC, this video is going to be beneficial to you. Now guys, I will make sure to timestamp this video so you can find specifically what you need help with because we're going to cover a lot. Whether that's which controllers I recommend, spicy controller settings, ALCs, overclocking the response time of your controller, and even some hidden tips and movement techs to make you the best controller player in the game. Now guys, without further ado, Let's get into the ultimate controller guide for Apex Legends. See ya! Let's go! <laughs> With this That's ultimate it. controller guide, we're gonna do something I've never done before. And we're gonna actually go over and talk about the best controller to actually use in Apex Legends or any other FPS shooter for that matter. Now guys, if you would like me to actually go a little bit more in depth Make sure you guys comment down below. Let me know which controller you would like me to go more in depth about. So you guys can kind of choose and pick the controller that you want. Now first up, we're going to go over the Scuffed Impact controller. This controller is a PlayStation controller. It does work for PC as well. Now the Impact specifically, one reason why I wanted to try it out, it does resemble that of a Xbox controller with its width. It also has digital triggers. So with these triggers, they resemble a mouse click. If you can hear that and I really like that about this controller personally on the back you will see the four paddles that come with this controller the main drawbacks I really find with this controller personally is just the specific position of the paddles on the back um, it's just a little awkward to me to have to position my hands this way in order to click the paddle on the right and also be able to click this paddle more towards the middle. The one in the middle is really the pain for me right here. And that's kind of one reason why I don't decide to use this controller. But overall, it's a really good controller, just not my personal favorite one for Apex specifically. They did come out with a Scuffed Instinct and Scuffed Instinct Pro that does have different style paddles on the back. Um, let me know if you guys want me to try to review that controller that is pretty new on the market. Um, again, this one's pretty solid, doesn't have the digital triggers on the Xbox version, um, which, you know, it's not a game breaker, it still has the ability to um, kind of block that trigger to make the hair triggers a little bit faster. Um, but other than that, same thing with this controller, the paddles are just not really positioned in my favorite location. If you guys do want to button map, it is really easy on scuff controllers. You know, you just use uh, kind of this electromagnetic mapping, um, throw it on the back change you know whatever button you want these paddles to be um, and it really helps out to kind of crouch spam and get some really good movement with controller we have the fusion controller i got this one to try it out and i think this is a good budget friendly option um, i believe it's only 80 89 dollars so it is a lot cheaper than the scuffs or the elite controllers um, the paddles are a little bit better than the uh, scuffs they're in a little bit better position. They do just feel a little bit cheaper to me. They feel pretty flimsy, if you can kind of see how flimsy they are on the back. They do kind of pop off pretty easily as well. Um, this isn't a bad controller at all. It just doesn't feel as polished and um, you know high quality as some of the other controllers out there. So this is just a plain basic controller. Again, you guys can adjust your settings in Apex to still be efficient with a controller without paddles. Um, I just recommend paddles. I've been playing with them for a while, really like them. But if you play claw, then you know a, a normal controller will do. But yeah, after that, let's get into the controller that I use. I specifically use the uh, Xbox Elite, but it's the Series 1. I prefer the Series 1 over the Series 2, mainly because I'm a little funky. I like the Series 1 large paddles and then the Series 2 small paddle. So I put the Series 2 small paddle um, on the top right and then I have the larger paddles from the Series 1 on the bottom. I've been using this um, ever since the Xbox Elite Series 1 controller came out. Um, it's very responsive. Uh, really love this controller. Don't have much bad things to say about it. Um, really quick response time and yeah, I just really love using this controller for Apex Legends. So guys, I mean, if you have the money for an Xbox Elite controller, try to find a Series 1, maybe a Series 2. I do like the Series 1 better than the Series 2, but that's just me, guys. 
Next up, we are going to get into the controller specific layouts and the ALC settings so you guys can beam your targets and win more gunfights. Now with these settings, these are subject to change to how you want to play the game. Me personally, I play on button puncher and I play with three paddles, one bound on the left to jump, one bound on the right to crouch and I play hold to crouch as well. And then I have a paddle on the right as well in order to interact in game. If you do not play claw and you do not have any paddles, then try out the evolved controller preset. This will allow you to jump with LB. That way you can keep your right thumb on the right thumbstick the entire time to keep aiming while jumping. And also you will be able to crouch with your right stick so you can still aim and crouch spam on your targets. Again, I have my crouch on hold, aim on hold, survival slot button is off so I can spin the kunai or spin any heirloom that I have. Trigger dead zones are set to none. Menu cursor speed is set to nine clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That way I can get in boxes and I can armor swap as fast as possible. Now next up, I do use advanced look controls. I have a full video that explains what each setting is and how to adjust those settings to your specific preferences and how you wanna aim. But for this specific video, I'm just gonna show you guys my ALCs. So if you guys wanna try them out and then try and change them to fit your playstyle, then go right ahead. So we got our dead zone at 10%, outer threshold at two, response curve is at six. My per optic settings are all at one. After that, yaw speed 300, pitch speed 220, turning extra yaw 30, turning extra pitch 30, 0% for ramp up time and ramp up delay, ADS yaw speed 140, ADS pitch speed 95, ADS turning extra yaw 80, and then we have zero for all three of these. Extra pitch, ramp up time, ramp up delay. Target compensation on, melee target compensation on as well. So next up, we are gonna talk about overclocking your controller if you're playing controller on PC. When you plug your controller in, that standard controller, it's gonna have a five millisecond response time. We can overclock our controllers to be at a one millisecond response time, and you're just gonna be much more snappy to your targets, and you're gonna be able to feel the difference pretty much instantly if you follow these steps. All you have to do with this is you need to follow this link. I'm gonna have the link in the description below. Click this zip right here, and you're gonna download the file. I'm gonna go ahead and go through it with you guys. Then next, you're gonna to wanna to right click on the driver and make sure you guys extract all, all right? Next, you're gonna to go to this setup file right here and you're gonna click the drop down, switch to all. And then when you have your controller plugged in, you're gonna be able to see it right here. As you can see, I'm already at the one millisecond response time. I've already done this. Once you found your controller, you wanna click right here in the name and you wanna click install service. After you click installed service for the first time, go over to the drop down, make sure it's set on a thousand, click a thousand, click install service again. And then you wanna unplug your controller and then just plug it right back in. And then you will see if it worked, if it says yes, 1000 and one right here. And it'll be green and highlighted all in green. So you'll be ready to rock at that one millisecond overclocked response time. Next, we're gonna get into our movement techs and our advanced movement abilities with controller. We're gonna get into things like tap strafing, super gliding, zip line tricks, wall bouncing, and moving while looting on controller. The first technique is to simply run at the box. It's really important to keep your right thumb on that analog so you can continue to look at the box and then you press your interact button while you're still sprinting. It also helps if you have auto sprint on for this first method. The second method is extremely important for armor swaps. This is gonna be really crucial for you to have that interact button where you can access that and still have access to your right thumbstick so you can look at the box while you are in midair. With both of these clips, I'm jumping and I'm quickly grabbing the armor swap. Make sure that your analog speed, your cursor speed is pretty high so that you can make this swap in midair and it's gonna be very beneficial in fights. 
Last but not least, the third method. This is how you move inside once you are in a death box. I was inspired by the goat himself, Snipe Down. He picked up a pair of three pedals that you can utilize in your game today. I can have the link in the description below so that you guys can check these out on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. And what you can do with these pedals is you can bind the left one with A and the right one with D. And then I have the middle paired with R. That way I can reload if I'm facing a door without opening the door or I can reload while I have a down squad mate right in front of me without having to revive that down squad mate. Okay, Face low, she's hella low. She's dead. Over here. Oh we'll cover the bunny hop and we can't necessarily do this as well as mouse and keyboard players They can heal a little bit better with this But you can still heal and do this and it's gonna give you a little more momentum and a little more distance when you're trying to get away And get to cover you can use this when you're trying to heal You can also use this trying to be aggressive to push enemies So you do not lose your momentum and so your weapon is still out in order to perform the bunny hop You simply hold down the crouch button so for me, it's my right paddle. And then all you have to do is press A as soon as you make contact and continue to hit A as soon as you're making contact with the ground. You can also use your right analog stick to kind of control your direction of your bounce. Next up, we have the wall jump or the wall bounce. And what you're gonna wanna do with this technique is slide into the wall. And then once you make contact with the wall, you're gonna wanna be facing the wall or facing the object you're using. You wanna stop movement with your left analog and then you wanna spam the jump button. Right after you spam the jump button, turn your right thumbstick where you want to go and that will send you the direction that you are wanting to travel. Next up, I'm gonna cover a couple movement techs with zip lines. So with a vertical zip line, you can simply hit X or your interact button and then double tap jump in order to get a super jump. So a normal jump off a zip line is just gonna take you this far, interact and then spam A twice you're gonna go much further with a super jump. This can also be applied with horizontal zip lines as well in order to get high ground or be a very difficult target to hit. So once again, I'm just hitting X and then tapping A twice. So this is the dizzy zip line trick. You can do it on controller. They did nerf zip lines where you can only grab the zip line three times. So you can only bounce off of it twice. This is very effective at the streamer building um, or the buildings with zip lines on World's Edge. All you're gonna have to do is you're gonna hold your interact button. So I'm gonna hold X and then I'm gonna turn and spam my jump button. to pull off this super glide once you hit the peak of the climb all you're going to do is either move your left stick forward left or right and press and hold crouch and jump at the exact same time now i'm going to show you guys some examples of me performing this technique while showing my controller inputs and also while showing the game in first person and in third person and i will also show a hand cam in case that helps as well now if you're trying to practice this technique in third person you will know you get this technique down and that you successfully performed a super glide if your character kicks out both of their knees and knee extension while they're in mid-air so guys walk up to the ledge a to climb and then at the peak of your climb hold a and crouch at the exact same time the easiest way to complete this is to use paddles on the back of your controller. Next, we're going to get into how to tap strafe on controller on PC. What you want to do here is you want to go to your library, click on Apex Legends, go over to Manage, make sure you go down to Properties. Once you go to Properties, scroll down to Controller, and then click this link right here for controller general settings. After clicking that link, make sure you have guide button focus is steamed as checked, the Xbox or the PlayStation controller you are using as checked, and that it's detected as well. 
Now we can close this out and return back to Steam. Once we go into Steam, we can go and we can manage with controller configuration. In order to tap strafe in two different directions, you're gonna have to give up two buttons on your controller. Now for me, I gave up down on the directional D-pad, which is the emote option. And also in game, I use auto sprint. So I changed my left stick click as the other button that I gave up. So the next step you're going to want to do is if you're changing down on the D-pad to one of the inputs, you want to bind D and W to down on the D-pad. After binding D and W both on the D-pad, you need to add the activator. Make sure you have hold to repeat turbo on and then max out the repeat rate. After this, let's go to the next button that we are giving up, which is the left stick click. So we're gonna have the style of input as joystick move output left joystick and the click action is a and w now with a and w again you're going to add that activator you're going to hold to repeat turbo and increase that repeat rate all the way up now when i pull up my xbox elite controller you can see i've mapped down on the d-pad as my right paddle and left stick click as my left paddle now that you've changed your inputs it's time to perform the tap straight so getting around corners without the tap straight will look like this and then when you do have the tap strafe activated, you're going to be able to get around corners quick like that, 90 degree angles, and be an insanely difficult target to hit. In order to perform the tap strafe, all you have to do is slide jump and then look in the direction that you want to go and then hit that button whether you want to go right or left. Slide jump, look right, and then click my right paddle. Slide jump, right paddle. Slide jump, left paddle. This is really easy to pull off and it's going to help you guys to be a lot more difficult to hit when you're being chased, when you're trying to run around corners, and when you're trying to style on your enemies. Alright guys, I hope you all enjoyed this complete controller guide. Guys, make sure to like and subscribe to the video. My name is Grizzy and I'm going to be coming out with way more content for you guys in Apex Legends Season 10 and far beyond Season 10 as well. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!